With the close of the year, it's time to take a look at the major jewelry news and trends of 2011. My name is Flurry Summers, creator of the two-volume Professional Pearl and Bead Stringing DVD course and the soon-to-be-released Advanced Pearl and Bead Stringing DVD. Here are my top picks, offered with the caveat that these are purely subjective, reflective of my own interests, and highly debatable. Most Watched Accessories First there was the announcement with Kate wearing Diana's ring. Then there was the wedding, watched by millions, and now comes an obsessive interest in all things Middleton, including accessories. This Christmas, Kate sported a new pair of 18 karat gold drop earrings made up of green amethyst surrounded by diamonds on a diamond hoop. The gift was reported and discussed in the trade and fashion blogs around the world. Most coveted jewels. Liz Taylor loved and studied jewelry and in her lifetime collected and or commissioned a number of historically important jewels and designer pieces. After her death, the auction firm Christie's undertook the sale of Taylor's collection, taking in more than $116 million, more than double the record for a single collection. Perhaps the most famous jewel in Taylor's collection was La Peregrina, the 55-carat 16th century pearl that belonged to a succession of European royalty. That sold for $11.8 million. Most anxiously watched. Although the price of gold has trended down from a high of $1,889 in 2011 to close at $1,612 today, it's still far too costly for casual use in jewelry. Notable and forgettable. A diamond ring produced by Ukraine-based Labortas Classic Jewelry has made it into the Guinness Book of World Records for having the most diamonds set in one ring. The ring boasts 2,525 diamonds for a total carat weight of 10.48 carats. Most ineffective. The Kimberly process, which many in the trade hoped would herald a breakthrough by certifying diamonds to ensure they are not used to fuel conflicts, lifted the ban on sales of Zimbabwe diamonds. The discovery of the vast alluvial deposits prompted the Zimbabwe government to seize the fields and evict artisanal workers by violence, including murder and rape. The lifting of the ban, despite the lack of progress in correcting abuses, was hailed by China and India, both large customers of Zimbabwe. It was criticized by the U.S., human rights groups, and the trade. This failure of the Kimberley process does not augur well for future efforts. The shortest goodbye. After three generations at the helm of De Beers, a period during which the perception of diamonds was forever changed, the Oppenheimer family sold the company to Anglo-American. The multi-billion deal was announced three weeks after Anglo-American approached De Beers about a possible sale. Newest distribution system. An Indian company will roll out 75 ATM machines in that country, dispensing up to 36 options in gold and diamond jewelry. The company says the machine is the first of its kind anywhere in the world and will further revolutionize the process by which precious metals and jewelry is bought. In the We Like to Look category. To help commemorate the Queen's Diamond Jubilee, Buckingham Palace recently announced it will display an exhibition of diamonds in August and September 2012. Among the items on view will be the monarch's Williamson brooch, which features a rare pink diamond said to be the finest in existence. Pieces belonging to Queen Victoria will be shown, state jewelry, and items from the Queen's personal jewelry collection will also be on display. The Rise of the Designer The trade confronted the challenges faced by the jewelry industry last year in a variety of unique and creative ways. Overall, commercial jewelry shows more flair and creativity than ever before. 
Studio Jewelers continued to produce stunning work, and my own experience shows that people who may have had little interest in creating their own jewelry are learning new skills and techniques, including pearl and bead stringing. This surge in interest reflects a desire to learn new skills, to remake and redesign old jewelry for personal use, and to develop saleable jewelry for extra income. For more information and resources, please visit my website, httpfsummers.com.